press B and change the size of my brush. B as in violet. Yeah. <laughs> B as in boy, yeah. Uh, that just gives me a fall off around it. So what I'm going to do is just take this and scale it up. That's really creepy. <laughs> Actually, I, let, me, let me get some better points. I want this one. Why edge tones are, are so important. So that's going to be our that's going to be our cheeks puff, right? So now I'm going to take this head, duplicate it again, unlock these, unlock selected, and translate it over. Right there. And I'm going to select yeah, some birds on this now. I want to select this one. So I made the blend shape, everybody followed that, right? But what happened is, when I use this blend shape, right, Maya has an order of inputs. So if everything we've done to this head, it's like, first you're going to do this, and then you're going to do this, and then you're going to do this. We did the blend shapes last, long after we did the skin tweaks to the mesh, right? So what we need to do is take the order of inputs and make it so that the blend shapes get factored in before the joint's done, right? So the way you do that is you can see that this puffy cheeks thing is working, right? That works. But the problem is, like, if I take this and I rotate it, right? Oh, that's great. And then when I puff his cheeks, it's like, hey, who's that with the full face? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't want it to do that. You want it to take that pose into account. So what I'm going to do is right click that mesh, or left click the mesh, then right click, you go to inputs all inputs, and it gives me a big list of stuff. And your blend shape here needs to be under your skin cluster. So what you can do is middle mouse that and move it underneath skin cluster. And now you can puff his cheeks until the cows. Well, if you did your blend, blend shape first and then did the joint gradient, then, then it would be fine. It would be like that. Yeah. That's going to happen sometimes where you've got something and then production's going to come to you and say, all right, the character needs to do this new thing. All right, and then you go back and fix it. Sometimes you need to insert it into something that's already set up. So is that like the inputs? Is that how you'll control the puffy cheeks? Um, yeah, so uh, we added the uh, cheeks puff, right? So what I want to do is connect this to the blend shape, right? So what I'm going to do is go to my uh, animate, set driven keys, set. I want to load the driver, which is the jaw control. And driven is going to be the blend shapes. So what I need to do is 
select my head, select puffy cheeks, right? And I'm just going to type in select puffy cheeks down the bottom here, right? So that's my blend shape. And I'm going to load my driver, or load driven, sorry. So cheeks puff is going to drive both of these, right? So when it's 10, I want um, puffy cheeks. I want this to be set to 1. So I'm going to key that. And when this is, oh, I never set it to 0. Oh, let's do that. I never keyed it with it to 0. All right, so puffy cheeks, this is going to be 0. Let's key that. And when it's, when this is negative 10, I want the implode shape to be on. So I'm going to take this and bring that up, key that. So now, I've got this. I can still do all this stuff on top of it. Ugh, give me a sandwich. <laughs> Here's your sandwich. <laughs> Praise <laughs> for the sandwich. <laughs> right? So it's it's quite possible to have fun with this. I, this is exactly how I animate all day long. <laughs> There's this zone of just complete ridiculous bullshit that goes on around me all day. And I ask anybody that sits near me when I work, I'm constantly like making stupid noises. Yeah. Um, so these have outlived their usefulness to us, right? We can keep, what's cool about this is when I bring this up, if I took this and then I altered this shape, it's like, I want this cheek to do this. It'll update it, right? So it's, it's a, it remembers the connection. So you don't delete them then? No, what I usually do, now you could delete them. I could take them and just go, now they're gone forever. This will stay, but if I need to edit it, I am screwed. So what I usually do is I take these and I save a version of the file that has them in. When I'm completely finished and I'm going to pass the rig off to production, we don't use blend shapes on our games because they wouldn't show up in the engine because it's all joint based. But I wanted to show you blend shapes because it's very useful in film and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, what I would do is usually just hide those. So they're in the scene. They're just hidden. And you just put it in a layer. And you could just put it in a layer too. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes, it will, sometimes blend shapes will work on a game. If you're working on a game that uses mesh baking, which is basically each frame of the animation is baked out of the geometry, then that would totally work because you're looking at the vertices, not the joints driving it. Almost, I don't want to, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that all of the games at Sony Online Entertainment are joint based because I think they are, but I could be wrong. But I think they are. Which I said twice. Tonight's message brought to you to the, by the Department of Redundancy Department. Um, okay, so now what I need to do is, oh, we did wrap the oh, we did blend shapes. Now we need to do wrap deformer. All right, remember that geometry I turned off before at the beginning? I'm gonna turn it back on now. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my Agent X dude and turn on his glasses. And his glass. I'm going to parent the glass to the frames. Parent that. His, his future is so bright, he has the machines. Um, what I want to do to this is I'm just going to take these glasses and I'm going to parent them to the head. So now when this moves, oh, oh he's so suave. Kick him off! Kick him off! <laughs> Just seeing his pain. <laughs> Alright. Now for the amazing part that will blow your mind. I'm going to turn on the hair again. That's not the amazing part. This is the amazing part. So if I move this right now, watch what happens. <laughs> what we want to use is a wrap deformer. Basically what that is, is you're using one piece of mesh or something like that to deform something else. So imagine if you took uh, a baby, 
<laughs> and you wrapped it with burlap. Right? Now if you took the burlap and you squished it and went like this, the baby inside would do that too. Right? That's a wrap performer. <laughs> It's kind of dark, but you'll remember it. Okay, so what we want to do, and, and I always get to order this wrong usually, is I think you pick the mesh first, and then the mesh you want to deform. And then create the formers, wrap. Uh, sure, no, I'm Create. You create the former mesh wrap, or just wrap. Oh, it didn't like that at all. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, remember when I said I do it wrong by accident a lot? I, I did it wrong there too. So you select this first and then this, right? Is that what I did? No, no, I did the head first. Okay, now I've got it right. Create deformers, wrap. So now when I move this, Oh, everything's fabulous. This concludes tonight's class. Any questions? Uh, Any questions? <laughs> I think there's something in the soda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, But you'd want to adjust the weighting. You'd want to probably turn off the, the hair visibility just so you can still see what you're doing. And moving the eyebrow is going to move the actual yes. eyebrow itself also? Yes. So anything, just like the, just like this moved the, um, the beard. Yeah. Because what's happening is this geometry is deforming this mesh based on where it was. So as soon as this moves, it, it has to move that other stuff. The only time you run into problems with wrap deformers is if you, um, or one way that you run into problems, is if you've got two pieces of geometry that don't match up with their subdivision, right? So if you've got like this perfectly smooth, like tons of verts thing here, and then you've got this big flat poly here, right? When you start to wrap deform it, it's gonna, you're gonna get popped through where the smooth part breaks through. That's probably the most ridiculous thing I've made in a while at school anyway. I made a giant lizard run around scissors today. That was pretty ridiculous. But duck face beard guys, this is right up there. Um, and that covers this. So next week, you need this. Right? It doesn't have to be as extreme as you duck face, but you want to have decent weighting so that his brows move, right? So we want to have brow movement, brow control, you want to have lip control, right? Those are set your keys. You want to have eye controllers, right? So that you can, um, let me turn off your glasses for a minute. So that you can, oh, look how cute he is with those glasses. Jealous. <laughs> 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 Uh, 
Uh, that's what you want. You want that level of control to make ridiculous bullshit possible. <coughs> Any questions about anything? Right? We talked about rap deformers. Rap deformers and blend shapes are the only two new things we did today. Right? Everything else we've done already. We've done aim We did aim constraints the very first night. Right? It's the same thing you guys do with your vehicles. Um, we used parent constraints for the stuff that we wanted to get translations and rotations on. We used orient constraints for um, just the head, right? So that when we move that, it would rotate the head. Um, that's about it. Any questions? All right, you guys can probably do this completely in the next 20 minutes. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> You might be able to, if you work along with me, I don't know. Um, the final is gonna be this, plus everything we've done already, right? So the head of your dude with the final